The topic today is some do's and don'ts for day traders. Today was actually a great day to day trade. I made, uh, uh, let me brag a little, I took several thousand dollars out of the market before the class. Um, and I'll show you those trades. But first I want to show you a little bit of theory, how this thing is done. Um, um, uh, all of the tools and all of the techniques that you see in this uh, presentation, uh, we use them in spiketrade.com. You're very welcome to visit. Uh, and uh, one of the things we do in Spike Trade, my partner, Kerry Lavorn, and I, we teach uh, what we call a password class, or password to the markets. Uh, tonight, Kerry is teaching a fantastic class. He invented a new type of moving average. Uh, but this presentation is based on three classes, three different classes in spike trade about day trading in the of background to day trading. Day trading is a very, very demanding game. Unfortunately, it, it often attracts uh, gamblers, uh, impulsive people, uh, but it's definitely, definitely not in beginner's game. I would say if you want to get into day trading, you have to look at your equity curve from swing trading. You should have, I would say, a minimum of 18 months of successful trading. If you are not profitable swing trading, you will lose money day trading. You have to learn how to do it at a slower speed. Day trading requires tremendous discipline. It requires total risk control and near instant reactions. With swing trading, you have time to think. With day trading, you stop to think, you're dead. The key rules of swing trading, so that's really the, the rule for, for I'm trying to convey to you. You have to know how to swing trade, then you can apply those rules at a much higher speed to day trading. The same key rules apply. You have to watch a limited number of trading vehicles. Uh, don't uh, spread yourself too thin. You have to have a de clearly defined trading system. Do you have your trading system written down? And you should have it written down on a page. Okay, a page and a half, max. But you have to have your system written in such a way that you can give it to a friend and he will do trades very similar to yours. You have to have money management rules. I recently, about a week ago, I got a call from this unfortunate guy who uh, read my books, uh, did a couple of swing trades, uh, made money in January, got into day trading, day trading in February, shorted uh, Shopify, Shop, one of my favorite stocks. And at this point, his $70,000 account is down to $35,000. What do I do next? What do I do next? Is that a day trade? Aren't you supposed to get out of your day trade before the day is out? Uh, sorry for questioning. You so you have to have money management rules, and you have to have very good record keeping. Record keeping is uh, record keeping is how you learn. Uh, one second, I have to take this toy away from my dog because she's squeaking it and making noise. Sorry about that. Work at home. Record keeping, keeping records, makes you your own teacher. When you keep records uh, and review your records, you become a better trader. And I'll show you an example of all four of these things today in this class. A limited number of trading vehicles. This is my quote screen. So what do I watch when I day trade? I watch E-minis, S&Ps, I watch crude oil, the euro, gold, and uh, US bonds. These are my trading vehicles. I also look at several stocks, and I am very simple. I pick uh, FANG stocks, the biggest stocks uh, uh, in the US, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, and throw in Microsoft for good measure. And then occasionally there is a stock that I'm, I've been talking uh, about with a friend, somebody drew my attention to it. And so I add a couple more stocks. This is it, and this is enough. I find that when I'm day trading, having two open day trades at any given time is about it. One is better, occasionally two, because you really have to focus on this thing. You have to have a clearly defined trading system. Uh, I refer to this, every trade deserves a name. You know, a guy comes to the screen, takes a look, says, oh, looks kind of good. Well, <laughs> looks kind of good is not a trading system. You have to have your system written down. 
these are the three methods I use. False breakout to the diversions, fading and extreme, pull back to value. Today, I will show you examples for two of those systems. Uh, again, we have no time to discuss them during the 30-minute presentation. Uh, come to Spike Trade if you will. I taught a class on each of those systems. Uh, uh, you can get a recording there. Uh, all my systems are based on triple screen that is described in my book, uh, uh, The New Trading for a Living. I always study charts in two time frames. I make my strategic decision on a long-term chart, tactical on a short-term chart. So when I'm swing trading, I'll make my strategic decision on the weekly, tactical on the daily. When I'm day trading, I will do my strategic decision on a 25-minute chart, tactical on a 10-minute chart. Here is an example. Um, here is uh, how, how my screen looks. On the left is a 25-minute chart. Uh, these are the instruments I use, the impulse system, MACD, false index, uh, and you can see uh, a bullish patterns developing on the 25-minute chart. I swing over to the five-minute chart, and that's where I decide where to enter. Uh, just a screenshot. Later today, I'll be showing you actual trades. Money management rules. Four steps. You have to decide in advance. What is your businessman's risk? Uh, if you have a $70,000 account, is $35,000 what you're going to risk on a single trade? Come on, wake up. Uh, I suggest a 1% and maybe less than 1%. Then you do, uh, you select a target. You select a target where you expect you, this trade to go. And I, sell, I set the target on a longer term chart. And then I set my stop on a shorter term chart. So for example, here is a five minute chart uh, of, uh, of the stock shop. And it shows that uh, one ATR, again, we have no time today to get into what ATR is and how to calculate it and how to use it, but it's a fantastic tool for tracking volatility. One ATR on a five minute chart equals two and a half dollars, two dollars 58 cents. This means, this means that when you decide to day trade the stock, your stop should be approximately $5 away from where you enter. So let's say $70,000 account, you decide to risk uh, 1%, $700, your risk per share is maximum risk is $5, you can do 100 shares, that's it. Uh, I call this the iron triangle of risk control. And last but not, excuse me, last but not least, record keeping. When I do swing trades, I have uh, a very, a fairly elaborate system. Again, we have it on Spike Trade. It's called Trade Journal. Uh, uh, my partner, Kelly Lavorne, and I developed it for ourselves. Then eventually we gave it to our members. Uh, uh, it's a system for planning, organizing, classifying, analyzing trades. And of course, when you day trade, there's not no time for that. So what I do when I day trade, uh, I take a snapshot of every entry, a snapshot of every exit, and then a third snapshot at the end of the trading day. And you will see actual examples uh, in a few minutes. Record keeping. So these are the four points, right? Systems, record keeping, et cetera. Here's an example of, uh, of a fairly recent trade. Uh, on the left is a, uh, longer term chart and you can see how uh, macd is starting to trace a bullish diversions force index starting to trade a to trace a bullish diversions uh, and then so it it looks good it looks like a reversal is coming i love trading reversals i go to the shorter term chart and uh, here you can see how the uh, how this uh, uh, it actually happens to be a crude oil uh, contract how this crude oil is starting to develop. Uh, that was about two weeks ago when crude was still at $19. Uh, how uh, on a shorter term, crude is developing a double bottom and beautiful, just beautiful, beautiful bullish reversions. Hop in, buy. And then the exit chart. On the short term chart, you can see how crude uh, rallied and appears to be stalling uh, near its previous top. 
you can see how force index is starting to curl up, out they go. Uh, you're not trying to buy the low and sell the high. I'm trying to get uh, to catch uh, a chunk from the middle. And finally, last but not least, at the end of the day, I return to this chart of uh, uh, of crude, and I see how was good and what was bad about my trade. I can see that my entry was very good, very happy with it. My exit was too early. And it's a fairly typical uh, mistake that I'm catching myself every once in a while. Exit too early. But you know, if you're going to make mistakes, <laughs> that's the one to have. Uh, there was a very famous European uh, financier, Rothschild. Uh, somebody asked him how he got so rich. He said, I always sold too soon. Well, I sold this crude oil too soon. Um, another example, uh, this is uh, a trade in Eminis. Uh, Eminis open on a gap up uh, on the long term chart and then here to stall. Uh, I go to the shorter chart and I see beautiful bearish patterns uh, developing. Uh, the name of the trade, fading an extreme, trading against uh, an extreme. Entry. And do you think I remember this trade today? Of course I don't. I mean, this trade was. Uh, uh, what's the date? April 16th. A while back. I don't remember this trade, but I pull up the chart and it's like I did this trade this morning. Everything is clear and I can review my experience. So I sold uh, high. I covered when uh, S&P started closing, uh, closed its gap and there was a bullish pattern developing on force index. Nice. Well, uh, at the end of the day, I see that I did uh, one good trade and one not so good trade, a bad trade. Uh, my shorting in the morning worked out just fine. And then I shorted again uh, at around 1.30 p.m., a little later, and there was not really a good signal there. There was a desire to elaborate on the short trade. And so uh, I always use purple to highlight my mistakes. And uh, I write a comment. There is no shorting signal on these charts, only an extraneous expectation of a decline. The expectation may be correct, but there is no signal today. That's about trade number 197. You look at your records, you review your trades at the end of the day, and you see what you did right, uh, and you see what you did wrong. And what you did wrong, it was still a profitable day on balance, but 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 I. I threw away about 25% of my profit for the day. Uh, and I am learning from it. I paid for my lesson and I'm learning from that lesson. Keeping good records. Show me a trader with good records and I'll show you a good trader. Let me show you three trades I did today. Uh, this is the S&P. I shorted it uh, last night uh, in, uh, in the after hours market. Uh, you can see how the uh, MACD diagram was becoming a weak MACD line started curling down. Uh, I woke up a few times in the middle of the night. I looked at this thing and uh, uh, was not the most peaceful night. And I don't usually take my day trades overnight, but this one was just, it, it was begging to be traded. Uh, I covered it, uh, uh, I covered it uh, this morning. Uh, when uh, I covered it when uh, the uh, short-term chart I uh, began to show that it was basing, it was near the lower channel line, force index was uh, popping those yellow dots, which say oversold, 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 enough. Enough is the power word in trading. Uh, and then I did uh, two in and out trades today. Uh, this is Microsoft, uh, and uh, this is my entry chart. Microsoft opened on a gap up, uh, and, uh, and and began to stall. Force index showed uh, an oversold market in both time frames, and uh, I went in and sold Microsoft short. The name of the trade is it pull back to value? Absolutely not. Is it false breakout with the diversions? No. It's fading in extreme. Very in a field that's quite dangerous. Day trading. This is one of the more dangerous techniques. So. 
you know, as I say, uh, I don't own a TV set, but I remember seeing TV programs where they say, kids, don't do this at home. All tricks performed by trained professionals. But that's what I did this morning. And, uh, and this is what I did with Microsoft. I classify all my trades in three categories. Win, lose, or scratch. This was a scratched trade. I mean, I made a few dollars on it. It's, it, it was a few dollars, a few hundred dollars, quite a few hundred dollars, but it was a scratch. It, I, I don't count it as a win because I shorted it very well. As you can see, I shorted this extreme and I was right. But then Microsoft dropped down and rejected the low. I put a little green arrow here. And that made me think that Microsoft really did not want to go low. It had a chance to go lower uh, very early in the morning uh, and it missed the chance. So when Microsoft began to rally and stabilize and a little bullish pattern developed in force index and uh, MACD histogram, uh, I covered my short. End of trade. Uh, we can take a look at it later when we look at live data, but I'll be reviewing this trade later today, of course, after the market close. Another trade early this morning, Facebook, very similar situation. Fading and extend, Facebook gaps up and, uh, and starts pulling away from its high. Overbought on force index, overbought on force index, and this little uh, red uh, icon uh, shows on my computer screen where I sold it short. So I'm obviously waiting for this gap to close, but not just for the gap to close because some gaps are very real. Look, for example, yesterday uh, uh, there was a gap uh, in, uh, in Facebook and it continued going higher from that gap. Uh, but, uh, but today's gap looked very, very, very suspicious. Uh, oh, this is the exit chart already, sorry, I jumped ahead a little bit. Uh, I consider this a profitable trade, not a scratch. Facebook, uh, attempted to rally again, declined, and came to what I call the value zone. It came to its moving average. And MACD histogram began to curl up, force index began to curl up, uh, out, 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 out. So this is for, uh, three trades today. And I don't want you to think for a moment that every morning is like that, that every morning begins with taking several thousand dollars from the market before lunch, no. Uh, it was a good day. Uh, some days the market gives you a lot and some days it gives you good like today and sometimes sometimes it gives you very little and sometimes uh, there is really not a good trade and, and, and an intelligent trader just sits on his hands. I'll never forget this friend said to me a while ago, says, Alex, lift up your butt, put your right hand underneath, now lift it up again, put your left hand underneath. Now sit down and have a good sit. Uh, but today was not a day to be sitting. So uh, we still have a few minutes uh, and let's take a look at today's market. Mike, I don't see the question. Let me see if I can pull up the questions um, uh, from the room uh, because I would like, uh, uh, well, because if, if folks have, I, I love seeing those questions, but Oh, I see it. I see where it is. Okay. So uh, let, let, let me do this uh, a moment. Of, again, not a PowerPoint user, a, mo a moment of housekeeping. Uh, I go here and I quit trade station. Although I shouldn't quit it. There's, there's some more files I wanted to show you, but um, uh, show screen, uh, main screen. And main screen is, uh, where is it? Trade station, trade station, where are you? Uh, uh, can you see, uh, gee, where, where did trade station go? I see the calendar uh, right now. Yeah, well, the calendar doesn't belong. Uh, let's see. Now, let me just kill this uh, side screen. I think that's what's uh, confusing me more than, uh, more than anything. Disconnect. Okay. Um, okay. Current screen. So let's see what's happening. Um, 25 minute chart on the left, five minute chart on the right. 
uh, you can see uh, the uh, my trade in the S&P that I showed you earlier. Uh, I covered it uh, at approximately uh, uh, 2904. Uh, it's now trading uh, almost 10 points lower. Uh, if anything, if anything, if anything, I think that as the day goes on, I may get a buy signal here. Look how on the long-term chart, uh, the previous bottom was very oversold. The current bottom is lower, but is not quite oversold. A possible buy signal is shaping up, but at the moment, there is no buy signal. Um, crude oil is a little too crazy to trade this day. I don't think I've, I've traded it in about five or six days. Um, crude is rallying uh, without gold. Um, hmm. Nope. No, nope. and this down. I look for the I'm looking for diversions. Um, bonds. Now this looks interesting. This looks interesting, and this may be a trade uh, uh, after this class. Uh, on the left, 25-minute chart of June bond futures. You see how this last bar broke out to a new high and failed to hold it. False upside breakout. You see a bearish divergence of force index. So the longer term, 25-minute chart says, we have a signal, false breakout with the diversions. We go to the five-minute chart, we see the same false breakout, and we see screaming diversions in MACD lines, MACD histogram, and force index. Screaming diversions. The impulse system already turned red. Well, uh, we have a few more minutes with this class. I don't want to start entering the trade uh, now, because I'll be paying attention to my screen, watching it like a hawk, instead of doing what I'm asked to do, which is teach. Uh, but this is this is what a good entry looks like. If this thing holds for another five, six minutes, uh, as soon as I finish with this class, I'll be in it. Let's take a look at some stocks. Uh, Facebook, which I shorted and covered, was not a bad cover. Was not a bad cover at all. Shorted Facebook, uh, you can see this little red dot. Uh, the white dot shows where I covered. And uh, it's now trading uh, a little higher than I covered it at. So a winning trade. And um, no new action suggested. The trade happened uh, during the first morning, bar, first bar of the moon, and it's gone. So uh, what else? Uh, Amazon. Um, strong ground in the morning, no shorting signal, nothing. Uh, sell off a little. And you know, some people think that if you stare at the screen long enough, you will find the trade. Yeah, yeah, you will find the trade if you stare long enough. But is it going to be a good trade? I don't think so. A good trade leaps from the chart and grabs you by the face and says, here am I. Here I am. If you don't trade this, what are you going to trade? So uh, that was, by the way, a trade uh, several days ago uh, on Monday uh, in Amazon. Opened on a gap uh, on Monday morning, began to sink, and continued to sink for the rest of the day. And right now, there is no trade. There is no trade. Markets are chaotic most of the time. You have to know what pattern you are looking for and wait for that pattern to emerge. Uh, Apple, superficially a bearish divergence of MAC histogram, but at the same time, MAC lines are going higher. That's not a good divergence. Skip. Um, uh, Netflix, uh, strong in the opening, sinking a bit now. And again, Look, the chart, the, the, the longer term chart, the 25 minute chart is near the 25 minute uh, uh, moving average, in, near the value zone. Netflix is fairly valued on this intraday chart. And when it's fairly valued, there's nothing for me to do. I want to buy low and I want to sell high. Here, by the way, it was a fantastic signal yesterday. I missed it. Uh, wasn't paying attention in the morning. But see, false downside breakout. Beautiful bullish diversions. I may see the histogram. I may see the lines. Force index. Alex, wake up. Well, <laughs> should have reminded me to wake up yesterday. Uh, you can't catch them all. Google. 
uh, and as I said before, I'm, I aim to trade the big stocks because uh, that's where the volume is. Uh, and you can get in and out with no slippage. You go to trade some little number, it will skin you at the entry and it will double skin you on the exit. Uh, and Microsoft, she traded earlier today. Well, uh, I think I ran a little too early and I knew this class was coming up, so I really wanted to be out of the picture by then. Uh, I shorted it very, very well, happy with it. Uh, and I scratched my trade uh, with, when it went flat. If I held just another half an hour, uh, I would be looking at a big time profitable trade, but it's falling without me now. So what am I going to do? Take more risk next time? <laughs> I don't think so. This is one of the biggest mistakes that traders uh, make. Uh, they, uh, you know, they say about military, about generals, generals fight last wars. Uh, World War I was a positional war. So France built this Renault line uh, uh, to keep uh, to keep Germans out. Well, they didn't come on the ground. They flew in in uh, planes and gliders and, and punched through the line. The line did not matter. Generals fight the previous war. The new war is different. Uh, so traders fight the last trade. If they were conservative in the last trade, like I was here, and the trade ran away from them, uh, they're more aggressive the next time. Uh, you know. I, I, you have to trade. Uh, you have to trade uh, the same way uh, every time. Have to have a system. Um, Mike, do I have a few minutes? I'd like to show a bit of a summary here, uh, if I may. Or do, do, do I have to shut up, uh, shut down? Uh, uh, we have about two minutes. Okay, two minutes is good. Okay, I'm back back to my PowerPoint. Uh, come on, Mr. PowerPoint, where is you? Uh, PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, so uh, we took a look at this market. To summarize, day trading, not a big game, it requires high level discipline, total risk control, near instant reactions. Um, benefits of day trading. Generate income if you know what you're doing. Sharpen your trading skills. The more you trade, the more you learn, as long as you control risk and keep good records. And you can use your day trading skills for better timing of swing trade entries and exits. Uh, in conclusion, uh, I want to invite you to spiketrade.com. This presentation was based on these three uh, password classes. And if you join us as a trial member uh, before May, Fifth, by May 5th, uh, you can choose one of these classes uh, as your welcome gift. Thank you very much for coming to my class again. And uh, this is Spike Trade. And uh, uh, thank the Money Show for uh, giving me a platform and providing some entertainment other than uh, playing with my dogs uh, in the middle of the day. Thank you very much. Best wishes. Be safe.